Using Home Assistant can quickly turn your house into the kind of crazy automations, as seen in Wallace and Gromit. Unfortunately, Home Assistant is not a simple app you'll find in your package manager, so in this video I'll tell you everything you need to know to get started with it. Installing Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi is a very interesting project. If you have some smart devices at home, lights, plugs, cameras, etc., you can make them work together. Everything will be controlled from one single app, Home Assistant. But first, you need to install it on your Raspberry Pi. To do this, there are two ways. The first one is to download an image of Home Assistant and flash it on a new SD card. You'll dedicate your Raspberry Pi to this task. Copy the URL give on the official website, and use it as a source in Azure. You can also download the file if you prefer. Raspberry Pi 3 and 4 are supported, in 32 or 64 bits. If you have another model, check the second method I explain in a few seconds. Once the SD card is ready, insert it into your Raspberry Pi and boot on it. There is almost nothing to do on the Raspberry Pi itself, you'll only get a black screen like that. Take note of the IP address or URL, you'll need it later. The second method is to use Docker, and create a container hosting Home Assistant on an existing operating system. If you already have a Raspberry Pi running 24-7 for another task, it's probably the best option. Start by updating your system to avoid any issue. Then install Docker, if you don't have it yet. You'll find the command in the video description. The Home Assistant documentation gives you the command to create the container. You just need to change two options, the time zone and then the configuration folder you want to use for Home Assistant. Once the installation of Docker is done, copy and paste this edited command to install Home Assistant. It will take a few minutes to download and install everything. Once done, we can move to the next step, and finally access the Home Assistant web interface. Whatever the method you choose, the web interface should be accessible at the same URL. Use the port 8123 with your Raspberry Pi IP address or host name. You should get this form, asking you to create the first user. Fill it quickly with your information and move to the next step. There you can change the installation name, adjust the location and time zone if needed. And select a unit system and currency. Tell if you want to share your data with the developers, and you can finally add your first integrations. Home Assistant will scan your network and show you all the smart devices detected. You can add them now or do this later. Each integration may require additional steps, like pushing the button on the hub for my Philips Hue lights. Home Assistant can connect to a ton of smart devices and APIs. You don't necessarily need to configure all of this now, you can do it later in the full interface. By default, the web interface of Home Assistant shows a nice dashboard, with the different integrations you added during the installation. You'll also find other pages like the map, logs and history. But we don't need it for now. If you need to add more integrations, go directly to the Configuration tab and click on Add Integration. Try to think of all the devices you have, or external services that can be useful in some automations you have in mind. We'll see later how to program everything. The list is big, so take your time, and you can always come back there later. As an example, I added a connection to AccuWeather, an API to get data about the current weather in my region. Like with most APIs, an account on the website is required, and a free API key is provided once logged in. You can use it in Home Assistant to establish the connection to this service. Once done, new values are available, and can be used in dashboards and automations. For me, dashboards are not the most interesting feature of Home Assistant. But it's important to check the data sources before trying any automation. You can easily create new pages, with the dataset you want. For example, I can create a new page for my weather integration, and display all the values I want, in the format I prefer. Home Assistant fill it with default cards, but you can move or remove all of them, and change the display settings. Anyway, try to at least display the data you want to use in an automation, and see how this value evolve over time. With each new card or widget, Home Assistant suggests different templates. 
and for each template, you can tweak it even more with additional settings. It's really well done, you'll love it if you like nice dashboards. Creating automations is generally the main goal when you set up Home Assistant. You have all these smart devices at home, but wouldn't be great if they can work together? That's the idea. An automation is composed of several elements. A trigger, that will tell when the automation should start. It could be anything. For example, a time of the day, or the temperature passing below a certain threshold. A condition, is like an additional criteria. For example, don't turn the lights on if my smartphone is not detected on the network. And obviously in action, like turning on the heater, the lights, etc. You may need a bit of practice to understand how to build your first automations, but you'll quickly get it. Think of something simple you want to try, and create the corresponding automation. Play with it, add conditions or funny actions to check that it works as expected. If you've read my book about Python, do you remember the exercise on how to automate your lights? You can do the same thing in Home Assistant without a single line of code. That's a great app, you should really give it a try. And if you are looking for other fun projects to try on Raspberry Pi, even if you are just getting started, I highly recommend watching this video now.